the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Actually, it's the Gospel of this day, with the same reading from the previous Sunday. It was about the signs of the end of the world, which included also some signs from the destruction of Jerusalem. Here comes the, some, some people are distracted in this Gospel especially, because it talks about two incidents the parousia, the coming of Jesus Christ again to meet his people, and the destruction of Jerusalem. And they are interwoven together. So you, the, the gospel was talking, this was talking in the gospel about the parousia, the coming of the, the second coming. And by the verse 16, he started to, to talk about the destruction of Jerusalem till the verse 22. And he comes back after this to the uh, signs of the second coming. But what I would like to talk about today is not the science itself, but the reaction of the church or the people towards the signs. What should we do if we would like to be uh, meeting Jesus Christ again in, in full joy? Actually, what Jesus said to his disciples before he has been caught, just two words, watch and pray. Watch and pray. If we, if we start to, to believe that through watchfulness, the light of watchfulness and praying, we can accept this second coming as a joyful even to us, our lives will be changed. That's why I would like to talk today about the second word, which is prayer. And at first I will say what prayer is not, before what prayer is. Actually, what prayer is not, it's not an aimless scream in the heart of a valley. Neither is it a crying out in a desert. Nor does its echo fade into the horizon as the sun sets, vanishing with the disappearance of all and voice. Because some people believe that prayer is a waste of time and life is about achievements. If, if you achieve something, you are a good person, you belong to a modern society, you are doing something good. But if you started to be static and enter your chamber and pray, you are not achieving anything good for the others. And you are doing something like uh, super, superstitions and uh, something is not beneficial for the others. But actually prayer is not like this. Prayer gives us the power to change everything around us and gives us the power to be real Christians and to put the, the, the Gospels into actions in our lives. If, if we define humanity in terms of achievements, we are having a serious problem. If we define humanity in terms of entity, who you are, not what you achieve, I think it's, it would be better for ourselves. That's why if, when we go for a prayer, when we start a prayer, we are not wasting time. We are changing the value of time We are changing the value of time to be of eternal interest. We are putting all our wills in some, 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 somewhere else which cannot be taken from us again. And prayer also is not an obligation fabricated by religion or created by humankind speaking to emptiness, imagining in it the God of rescue and help. Because some of the trends now in, in studying religions, they say that we create our own gods and we pray to our own created gods in a, all, in a whole vicious circle of 
imagination. But actually, prayer is not like this. We don't fabricate prayer to our created image of God. We, we, we start to experience the presence of the real God in our lives and get the power to be able to be Christians in our lives. It is not a necessity of a sick imagination escaping to talk with himself, visualizing in this other self a listening God. It's not at all an imagination. It's a reality. And we can say it is the reality, not just a reality. It is not an alter ego or a shadow shattering words to itself, nor a wine on which the soul becomes intoxicated and blindly turns away the facts of reality, departing from the rationality of earth's body and time. Through prayer, we, we don't just escape our suffering. We are pursue, pursuing the real physician, the real healer, who can understand our suffering and heal this kind of suffering. So prayer is not an escape from our situation. It is changing our situation by putting our lives in the hands of the one who can change this situation, which is God. That's why prayer is the necessity of life. It is a deep action that touch the divine immortal part of the human being, which is his spirit, which is a gift from God to us and in us. Prayer also is not about consuming time and wasting that which will not produce tangibly, but it is transforming time into eternal value and intensifying time to embrace its purpose and its end, which is eternity and timelessness. If we go to the meaning of prayer, we have seen that prayer is not an imagination, prayer is not a fabrication, prayer is not an obligation that is made by people to escape their situation, which might be a situation of suffering or pain. It's not like this. So what prayer is actually? At first, prayer is the process of transforming our earthly mind to be a heavenly mind. Transforming our mind that gets its logic from this world to a mind that believes and submits itself to the logic of the, logic of the world to come, which is the logic of Jesus Christ. If, if we define what repentance is, Repentance is the, the, the change of life, the transformation of life. But how, how can we change our lives? First of all, by adopting a new understanding of ourselves, of the others, of the society we are living in, of the world we are living in, of history, of the age to come. This new understanding based on the understanding that we were given by Jesus Christ when we are united with him in prayer, in the Holy Communion, and through the, uh, the needy person of this world. That's, that's why there are th three spheres of, of prayer. The prayer which I practice by myself to God, the prayer in which I am united with God like the, the prayer of the whole liturgy, the, the community. I'm, I'm united with God and with my brothers. It's the, the same body of Christ who are united together in this transformation process of prayer. And there is another form of prayer that the Desert Fathers talked about many times. It's the prayer through understanding the suffering of the needy persons. St. John Chrysostom say there is an altar away from the altar that you are taking communion with, which is this. It is this sick person, this needy person, that is by the corner of your street. And on this altar, you should offer your sacrifice. He's not saying that there are two altars, but he's saying that we are taking the power from this altar through the unification with God, 
in order to be able to help the others to see the real light of God through our actions, through our choices that we made, through our moral choices that we made. So that's why if we pray in our chambers and, and don't pray with each other and unite with Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, we are lacking something. And if we pray together and pray in our chambers, in our homes, and we don't see the agony of the world outside, so this prayer is not a real prayer. Because the real prayer opens our eyes to what's going outside these walls. It is a whole cycle. We need to pray in order to experience God in our hearts. We need to pray with each other to, to experience the, the body of Christ together and to be uh, strengthened with each other and completed with each other. And after this, we go to the world and proclaim the real light that we have experienced and practiced and have seen in those circles of prayer. Finally, I, I don't want to, to talk about it uh, for a long time. I'll just read something about prayer also. And what is prayer? Sometimes pl pr prayer is, is like uh, the sign of our relationship with God. If we are having this uh, stimulus in our hearts to pray, it means that we are practicing a real re relationship with God. If prayer is not in our interests, so there is something missing in our relationship with God. That's why prayer is an abundant desire to meet Jesus, a desire that takes the soul and inflames the longing heart every moment. And this longing intensifies as the soul prays. As the yearning to meet Jesus does not stop or cease or extinguish, for prayer kindles and ignites the fire of longing, and the spirit becomes vibrantly alive and joyfully ablaze in each moment of prayer. It's like fire. One of the desert fathers, when he uh, was asked what is prayer like, he just stretched his hands, and his hands began to be like fire, and he told his disciples, if you would like to pray, be, you should be all like me, a fire, a fire of the Holy Spirit, that, because actually our God is, is, is fire, and the Holy Spirit, we have the, 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 the sign of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts by the tongues of fire. So it's all about this zeal inside, this fire inside that changes our lives. Finally, why do we pray things from books? Why, don't we, why, why can't just we pray freely? We can just pray and say all the things that we have to say without any liturgies, without any uh, written prayers or something like this. There are two concepts of prayers. There is this concept of prayer that it's about expressing who I am. And the other concept of prayer, which is a prayer, I think, is in the Orthodox Church, is that it proclaims who I should be. It doesn't express who I am, it expresses who I should be. When we pray this liturgical prayer, which is rooted in the event of Jesus, the incarnated God, the crucified God, the resurrected God, this event of Jesus, when we pray about this event, we are praying to be rooted and planted in Jesus Christ. So it's not about what we experience now in our lives. It's about what we would like to be. So prayer changes our minds to be the mind of Christ. Because one, one of the theologians he, who is in the States who is called uh, Thomas Hopkins, when he was asked about prayer, he said, sometimes we pray just to tell God something that he already knows, 
and suggest to him a way he already knows. So uh, we can pray, I am in pain. He knows that I'm in pain. You can do this to get the pain out of me. He, he knows exactly what to do to get the, the pain out of me. This is not the prayer. It's just expression of myself. The prayer is to go to Jesus Christ and surrender my heart and my pain and my mind to him and tell him, you tell me what to do in this situation. I will not tell you what this situation is because you know everything. That's why we pray in the Lord's Prayer, let your will be done. Why? Because he knows what's right and what's wrong. And he has, we have to go to prayer to be transformed, not just to express ourselves. I will conclude with the words of Jesus Christ to his disciples, just watch and pray. Watch and pray. Those are the two ways that we can expect the second coming of Jesus Christ, the parousia, with joy. Is the glory be to the God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.